If you're brand new to War in Order or you're considering starting the game, then this is the video for you. Today, we're going to go over some mistakes that new players make in War in Order, and we're also going to go over some basic concepts of the game if you're a beginner. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. So today, we are back in War in Order, and if you missed my initial first impressions and walkthrough of the beginning of the game, that video is also on my channel. And just like I mentioned in that video, this video is also sponsored by War in Order. And in the comments of my last video, some of you guys actually seem to be familiar with War in Order. So let me know in the comment section below have you tried war in order before and if so how long ago was it because i know the game has been around for a really long time now a few hours ago i logged in and i saw this mail in my inbox and what this means is that there was a player that scouted my city while i was offline and why would they do this they were scouting my city to see how many resources that i had and luckily for me i basically didn't have anything that they could plunder if they attacked me while i was offline and this is a really important tip if you are a brand new player you don't want to have too many resources available for plundering in your city and how do you know if you have too many resources well there's a building right here called the depot and if you tap details here this will tell you how much of each resource you can have in your city that is completely safe from being plundered and it can actually be pretty easy to go over these limits because well as you're playing the game you're going to be producing resources within your city walls and you also are going to be claiming a lot of resources from completing the king's road sort of tutorial main quest at the beginning of the game each time you get some amount of resources and if you go Go through these a lot you're gonna get a lot of resources from that but also a lot of times new players to these games will come into their bag and they'll see oh okay well i've got tons of food crates wood crates right like these things i could might as well just open them that way that it's available to me when i need it to upgrade a building or to do research and that's a huge mistake because if you open up all these items here then all of this food and wood goes into your depot and if it exceeds that maximum protection amount then it can be plundered whereas if you leave it in your your pack then it's safe it's in resource item form and that can't be plundered it's just an item on your account so of course don't use these items until you need them but another place that could get you a lot of extra resources that you might not need right at this very moment is actually in your quests at the very bottom here if you go into the growth quest which is kind of like your main quest line here you're going to see a bunch of different things that you can do that you're going to get rewards for if you tap on it you'll see that i'll get 17,000 food and wood and a couple of speed ups and some other things by completing this quest same thing for the next one here 12,000 of each and so when you complete these quests you're gonna see a little green icon here that lets you claim the rewards for that quest and you don't have to claim them right away you can kind of let them pile up why don't I just show you I'll complete some quests here you see the little three this means that I have three quests that I can claim the rewards from if I tap on it you'll see how many resources I'll get and I can just leave these here until I need those resources. That way I don't exceed my depot protection capacity. And trust me, as easy as it is to exceed this protection capacity, it's also really easy to spend down your resources. You're going to need it to upgrade buildings, research and train troops. So there will come a time where you are going to need a lot of resources, for example, leveling up your castle. And so if you don't have enough resources to do it, that would be a good time to go in and claim all of your quests. That way you can immediately use the resources to get you under that protection capacity and then you're good. Now, another mistake that I made in my first video is not joining an alliance immediately okay that should be like the first thing that you do and I was just so invested in going through the quests that I wasn't even really thinking about it but the first thing that you should do when you start the game is go into your embassy and you should join an alliance okay now if you tap and hold on the screen here you could see what all the different names are for all the different buildings okay and you can kind of look around and see what you're looking for this is the embassy and at the bottom of the screen you'll see an alliance button and here you can see the alliance that I'm currently and it's called Egypt okay and as it turns out this is the player that actually scouted me earlier in the video but the reason that you should join an alliance immediately is because if you tap on the embassy and you go into details you're going to see that being in an alliance gives you a certain amount of helps okay so what this means is if you go to like let's say upgrade a building like my depot for example it's going to take nine minutes and 20 seconds to do the upgrade but once you're in alliance when you start a building you're going to see this little icon that shows up above that building and if you tap that it's going to request a help from your allies and any other player that is online when you request for help 
they're going to be able to tap the help button and it's easy to see how many people have actually helped you for your buildings by coming into the alliance and tapping help and you'll see that there's nobody on right now at this exact moment while i'm recording to give me a help with these buildings but when those players log in and they tap help it's going to decrease the time that it takes to upgrade that building for free and so the sooner that you get into an alliance the more progress that you're going to be able to get helps for and therefore you're going to progress through the early game a lot faster so it's important to join an alliance early and it's important to be online often in the early game and it's also important to join an alliance that has active members right because if you join an alliance like right now I'm not getting any helps right so you really want to be in a place where there's going to be people online all the time that they can tap that button and speed through things for you that way you can save your speed up items which is going to be in your backpack here it's called speed ups and you also can save your gems okay gems are a limited premium resource you don't want to blow through those speeding up things it just doesn't it's not a good use and for this reason the embassy is a good building that you should consider upgrading because when you go ahead and upgrade the embassy you're going to be able to get more helps okay so this is definitely a building that you want to prioritize because the more times you can be helped the more time you save on the buildings and everything else so it's basically free speed ups so focus on the embassy now the Devo building that we talked about before also gets benefits from upgrading and of course if you what you want to do is protect more resources then upgrading your Depot is going to be a really good idea in fact upgrading the Depot is actually a profitable idea if I come in here and I go to tap upgrade you'll see that it costs one 1875 food and wood to upgrade my depot to the next level and every time you upgrade the levels it costs a little bit more okay so needless to say getting my depot to level five costed a little bit less than this and the quest that I completed when I did that you'll see here upgrade the depot to level five well I get 3800 wood and 3500 food plus Lord experience and a speed up so I actually get more food and wood from the upgrade than I spent so upgrading the Depot is literally a net positive it is literally a profitable endeavor to go on so definitely consider doing that but the most important building is going to be your castle I mean there's a reason that it's at the top of the hill right I mean like come on that it's got the shiny star on the top you know it's the most important building and the reason for this is because like the description says this is the core building of your city this building's level determines the maximum level of all the other buildings in your city so if my castle is level seven right now then that is the highest level that I can bring any other building in my city that I can't go past that and on top of that when you do upgrade this building you're going to gain a nice gathering speed bonus so as you're out in the world you can gather different resources that you need to progress through the game and you're going to gather them faster if you have a higher castle level and for every level that you increase your castle you are going to get some nice rewards from your growth map but you also unlock new features so here you can see when i got to level seven i unlocked the feature of activating troop promotions at the drill grounds i also get these nice rewards here some speed ups and also some beast experience pills which we are going to use so always remember to come into the growth map here and collect these rewards as you're progressing through okay so not only is the castle required to progress but you should rush the castle so that way you can unlock the most amount of features and get the most amount of rewards but there are going to be some prerequisites to upgrading your castle for example I need to get my castle wall to level seven and I also need my depot to level seven so right now I'm actually working on my castle walls and so you might think that okay well my builder is busy I'm not going to be able to upgrade anything else but you'll see right here that I have a golden hammer in the top left corner with some sleeping Z's coming out of it. And that implies that I've got a builder sitting around doing nothing, right? So I can do something else. Now, if you don't have this golden hammer, you will get a temporary one for free just by playing through the game. Or you'll see at the top of my screen here, there's the eternal hammer bundle. And this is 499. You're going to get the eternal golden hammer. Okay. If you are a brand new player, low spender, you buy only one thing. This is probably a good one-time purchase because having the golden hammer literally doubles your building speed. Okay. And that means that I can work on both of these prerequisites at the same exact time. So here we come into the depot and we can start the upgrade 33 minutes that is no problem we'll ask our alliance for help now I could speed these buildings up but I don't really get too much value from that right like getting the castle wall to the next level there's really not that much that I get here golems is nice that's going to help defend your city but like what do I get immediately for doing that not that much like what about the depot here okay we protect a little bit more resources for the upgrade but that's nothing crazy it's better to let our alliance members help us the maximum amount of times and then 
if we want we can speed it up or we can just wait for those buildings to finish but there are some buildings that are worth actually using speed ups for first of all if you're in the middle of upgrading your castle and everything else that you want to work on is at its maximum level you literally cannot progress any farther until that castle is upgraded well the castle is the bottleneck then and for every minute that you can't make any other progression it's a minute of time that you're wasting on, a, on another building right so in those cases you might as well speed up the castle upgrade but besides that there are some other buildings that you should consider upgrading that are very important first of all you have barracks okay so right here you're gonna see a little bow and arrow okay and if I tap that I'm going to recruit you saw my power went up there by 300 I'm going to recruit the troops that I have been training in my barracks so if I come in here you'll see that I can train infantry cavalry archers or mages and the number of troops you can train is based on a variety of factors but you'll see here that it does take a certain amount of time to train those troops 53 minutes if i want to train 200 of the tier 2 cavalry these are dragon riders so if i do that and then i tap on the barracks again you'll see that i actually don't have the ability to upgrade my barracks so if i want to upgrade this building then i have to finish training my troops so okay let's go ahead and speed that up here and then we'll come in here and we'll start the upgrade for that barracks and then you'll notice that well wait a minute I actually can't train troops while I'm upgrading the barracks and so there is a trade-off there's an opportunity cost to upgrading that building and therefore it would actually make a lot of sense once you get all those Alliance helps to speed up the barracks because every minute that you're waiting for your barracks to upgrade is a minute that you could have gotten more troops right and so you're gonna get more troops faster by speeding up the production or the upgrade of your barracks and if you're trying to progress as fast as possible get as much power as fast as possible then you don't want your barracks just sitting around doing nothing you'll know if they're not doing anything because you'll see these little z's you see the z's that are coming out of my college here you're gonna know that they're basically being useless okay you're wasting your barracks if they're just sitting there doing nothing don't waste your training Time. it's also worth noting that when you do upgrade your barracks you're going to unlock higher tiers of unit okay so eventually you'll get the tier three tier four tier five we went through all the different tiers in my previous video if you're curious about that go ahead and check it out in that video but the higher the tier unit the more stats it has you can see on the right here uh, a tier six versus a tier seven it's got much higher stats and also they have different skills here so this one reduces damage from archers by 25 percent this one raises your attack when you are the attacking side of an exchange so there's a lot of different reasons why you would want higher tiers of troops so keep that in mind for example i just got my barracks to level seven and i unlocked the level three advanced swordsman elite light cavalry crossbowman and apprentice mage these are the tier three units now the other thing that's important when you hit level seven for your barracks is you can actually promote your troops at the drill grounds okay and the troop promotion is a very cool feature basically you can come in here and convert your lower tier units to your higher tier unit so for example i have 850 tier one basic swordsmen and I can convert them or, or upgrade them to my tier three advanced swordsman. And that's just going to cost you the difference in the resources. And it's going to cost you some amount of time. Okay. Because it's a lot faster to train lower tier units than higher tier units. And so this kind of upgrade system is just a way to catch up your troops to the progress of the rest of your city that you might be making over time. So let's go ahead and start that. And you'll see that it takes about six hours for, for all those. But the good news is that I still have my barracks available so I can still be training the new advanced swordsman that I just unlocked. And you'll see it's an hour and 24 minutes, right? And so it's a lot longer than the 54 minutes from before. But if I wanted to train the previous tier in 54 minutes, I can still do that as well. You can change that here. It's also worth noting that the drill grounds also determine how big of an army you can have if you tap details here this is the bottleneck to your size limit so if you want larger armies for war drill grounds is what you need to upgrade now so far we've talked a lot about progressing different buildings and training troops but the college is probably even more important in the early game than any of that okay if you come into your college you're gonna see that there are a bunch of different research trees different tech trees that you can go down you have military guardian force city defense development and resources and in the early game I want you guys to focus on development because this these researches are going to be super important for getting through your buildings a lot faster getting through those building upgrades for example architecture one is going to increase your building construction speed and so if you prioritize this and everything else in the development category here then 
all the building upgrades that I do from that point onwards are going to require less time to complete. Okay. And that is like an exponential thing. So definitely focus on development first. You're going to see things like your medical facilities, which increases the amount of wounded troops that you can have in your city, right? So when you're getting attacked by another player, some amount of your troops are going to go to the hospital. And if you don't have enough space in your hospitals, there's a, there's a maximum, right? Just like in real life. Well, any wounded troop beyond that just dies. They go away completely. Okay. And you get nothing for it. So you'll have to retrain those troops. And so having the most amount of hospital space is really important. And likewise, things like raising technology research speed. If I do this, then, you know, I max this out. Well, then when it's time to do my military upgrades, I'm going to be able to go through them a lot faster because I focused on the development research first. So keep that in mind. The college, very important building. And really, you should be researching something at all times, just like with training troops, just like with having two builders going at the same time. I know I'm breaking that rule for this video because I'm showing you guys a bunch of different stuff, but always, always, always be using these production cues. Now, the fastest way to see if you are training everything possible, upgrading everything possible, researching everything possible is actually tapping this little arrow on the left side of the screen. You tap that and it's going to tell you what's idle and that's in red. Okay. So we have two builder cues. One of them is doing nothing, which we already knew because of the golden hammer with the Z's coming out of it. Okay. But we can also see that I don't have my max number of barracks, but my second barracks is idle doing nothing so we can come in here and we can start to recruit some more troops let's do some mages here and you can scroll here okay so you'll see here that i am doing research but i don't have any armies doing anything ideally i should be gathering resources right now but we're not going to do that we also can produce some materials over here let's just go ahead and get some things uh started and then there's other things that will show up a little bit later in the game and just like with your training buildings for your college when you go to upgrade your college you're not going to be able to do research during that so that's another building that if if you're going to use speed ups on a building like that's a really good one to choose okay so we've talked a lot about some of the important buildings within your city walls let's move a little bit outside of your city walls and we'll start to talk about some of those other buildings now one thing that you're going to come across really early in the game and i showed this in my last video so if you missed that check that out but you sort of get a pokemon-esque moment where you get to pick a beast and that's this obvious massive dragon you know obviously i picked the dragon but if you want to see my choice check out that last video but it feels like a big moment right and I kind of went with my gut here and your beast is going to be very important for waging war but the good news is that you don't really have to worry about picking the wrong beast because first of all if you go through some of these beasts here you're going to see that the active skill on these beasts is all kind of the same i mean here you can see that for the pegasus here you'll see the active skill called thunder charge summons a thunderbolt to attack the current target every eight seconds and damage is 120 percent of normal attack but if we come over back to my dragon here you're gonna see ice spike same thing every eight seconds 120 percent of normal attack and if we come over here to the panda holy fist same thing same amount of damage now they do have different stats here okay that is it's important to note but in the early game it's not that big of a deal which one you pick and you can switch you do get a free way to switch beasts later down the line you also can use gems eventually if you really want to switch once more and the level of your beast the progress that you make is going to remain again if we come over here you'll see at the bottom it says after switching beasts the training progress for the same skin series will be directly inherited and take effect so you don't have to worry about that so don't worry about picking the wrong one here and in fact once you get some of this beast experience you should probably just use as much of it as you can so you can level them up and get higher stats once you get into like mid and late game and you have a better idea as to what you're doing in war and order you get the hang of things then you can come and make a more informed choice as to which beast you want to be using and just out of curiosity when you picked a beast which was the first one that you picked did you go with the dragon like me or did you start going for the phoenix the pegasus or the panda i feel like i made the right choice now moving further outside the walls okay the beast is like the first thing outside the walls but if you come outside of these outer walls here you're going to see that there's a bunch of different plots of land that you can fill in with different types of buildings you have sawmills farms training grounds medic tents stone mines iron mines and those are locked until you get to a higher level level 10 and level 15 respectively and you'll see here that there is a limit to the number of each of these buildings that you can have so for example i can have up to four medic tents i can have up to six training grounds and the same for farms and sawmills the highest is six but there's only a maximum amount of plots of land here now there is more space over here 
as well but you're going to notice as you go through your king's road you're going to have to have a certain amount of each of these and they have to reach a certain level and having a varied amount of each of these types of production buildings is important okay you're going to need wood you're going to need food and all the other resources so having some number of those buildings is also crucial but i really think the medic tent is probably one of the better buildings to at least have all four of right because the more medic tents you have the more wounded troops you can sustain from battle without getting more dead troops okay and getting dead troops is like throwing resources and time in the garbage so if you can have a building that will prevent you from wasting resources and time then that would be the one that i would focus the most on of course in the early game you might need more resources and then later in the end game you want to have probably more training grounds so you can train more troops so for example i just built a level five training ground and if i come back over to my barracks here you can see that now i can recruit 225 units okay and so again later on the line when you've upgraded all your buildings and everything like that then it's going to be important to have more training grounds so that way you can build up a larger army and remember having the resource production is nice but you can also gather resources out in the world there's nothing you can do out in the world to prevent you from taking more deads from a, from a fight right so really i think the training grounds and the medic tents are probably the most valuable because they're kind of indispensable now the last piece of advice that i want to give you guys is really it's dead simple okay which is kind of why i wanted to leave it till the end of the video but it is so important that like i if it's a beginner guide i have to say it you want to focus on your king's road and you want to focus on your growth quests and daily quests okay these quests and the progress that you make here is going to give you a ton of free resources a ton of progression materials that you need to get stronger and the faster that you go through these these levels these quests and the king's road the faster you're going to gain power and get up to fighting speed here in war and order there's also obviously a ton of events in war and order if you tap this button here you can see that there is a seven day march event and every single day that you log in for the first seven days there's going to be some quests that you get now you want to obviously log in every single day and here you can see for day seven if i spend a certain amount of speed ups i get a bunch of these goodies lord experience resource chests these are level two and three on day six i got a speed up reward as well so if you're going to do the speed up ones you might as well wait till day seven and then collect all of them at all at the same time here we see on day five barracks level seven boom we get that for free day three a level two beast there which was nice architecture one reaches level three boom we get a bunch of these free resources now doing every single one of these quests is giving you some amount of progress in this top bar here and as you do that you're going to get some equipment okay level five boots we can also get level five hat sash ring and then we also get a phoenix castle it's a seven day decoration for your castle that's going to give you extra attack when you're fighting other players and other things out in the world you'll see that there's actually a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different ways that you can decorate your castle skin but this is the phoenix castle you get a five percent attack boost so i mean the attack boost is not that special right there's a lot of skins they they all give you an attack boost but it does look really cool especially as a brand new player so you might as well try to get it now if you are a spender in the game each day is also going to have its own special pack and typically these are actually pretty good value you get a ton of speed ups and 400 gems for 199 same thing with day two there's a ton of gems here 299 day three gems and resources but just to illustrate the value here for 499 you get 4.5 million food and wood plus you get a bunch of stone here and you get the gems and if you come into the shop this ten dollar pack only gives you 1.8 million of the wood and the food and you get more gems here but you get the point even if we come over to the discount construction pack this is only going to give you a million food and wood and the same amount of gems for 4.99 you again you get a couple of other goodies here but in general these really early game special packs they are a pretty good value if you need what is actually in them but like i said earlier in the video really the golden hammer pack is like the best place to start if you just started playing war in order and you are going to spend a little bit like this is probably the best 4.99 that you can spend in the entire game you could also consider things like the value card for example for 6.99 you're going to get 300 gems every single day for 30 days that is 9,000 gems and if you came into the gem shop here you can see that 5,000 gems is $20 okay so really the value card is actually a good value plus there's some other benefits here as well now since you made it all the way to the end of the video I'm going to give you guys a really important final tip here and that's going to have to do with your Lord now if you come into the Lord info in the bottom right corner and you tap on Lord skills in the bottom right 
you're going to see that there are two skill trees. There is the war tree and the development tree. And you can see here that I have put way more points in my development than in my war tree. And why is this? Well, it's the same strategy that we took with the college earlier in the video. You want to focus on your development first because you need to get your levels up on your buildings. You need to start to unlock more troop tiers right and so you can't really go to war if your entire account is weak and so the faster and more efficient that you can upgrade all of your buildings and your research then the faster you're going to get to a state where your account is able to wage war so focus on your development skills first starting from day one because you're going to get some nice building speed at the beginning of the development tree and then also once you have 11 points in your tree you're going to get harvest and this lets you instantly get six hours worth of output from all your resource buildings now you'll see on the right side of the screen there's a little warrior with a helmet on if you tap that this is your hero and you can see that i don't really have any active skills available to me yet except for the one that i got in the development tree called harvest so if we come over here and we use this then boom we instantly get six hours worth of progress now of course you want to use this when you have the highest level resource production buildings that you can get for the day but boom i instantly got a bunch of different resources and now there's a 12 hour cooldown so definitely make sure that you at least grab this uh, you're going to be able to just get a ton of resources every 12 hours just boom right away so you can use them and of course make sure they are protected so other players can't steal it guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video definitely give war in order a try like I said earlier there is a link in the description below you can download the game for free and it really does help support the channel without generous sponsors like war in order I wouldn't be able to do what I do here on YouTube to make the content that I make for you guys so if you appreciate that and you want to help the channel click the link in the description below give the game a try and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a video and drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other players might see it and while you're down there drop a comment let me know what you think about war in order have you played the game are you planning on giving it a try with that being said though thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace